staff of the electricity company of Ghana have accused some senior managers of the power distributor of inciting workers against their managing director. According to the staff, some top managers who are eyeing the position of the managing director are behind the petition submitted to the presidency demanding removal of Kwame Ajman Budu as managing director. Joining me on Zoom is Ben Arta, who is a labor consultant and speaks for a section of the ECG staff. Mr. Arta, good, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. And so, good afternoon to all our viewers as well. So, which side of the staff are, do you do you represent those who are for the maintenance of the manager or those who are for his removal well i i i have been consulting for a section of uh, ecg staff who at some point in time you know uh, were being faced with demotions but of course uh, having called me as a labor consultant with an in-depth knowledge of what is going on in ECG, I think I'm well able to respond to some of the issues that have been raised. Mm. You know? No, I, I just want to clarify so we know, because what, what I'm just reading to you right now is that some uh, staff of the ECG, you know, yesterday we had a, a release that some of the ECG staff, senior and junior staff have come together and are asking for the removal of the general manager. But this afternoon of course there are some who are against that so i just want to clarify where you stand in this not for those who who are not for the removal definitely those who are not for the removal okay so yesterday if you look at the petition that the staff if you look at the petition that the staff put together they are very clear in their mind that under the leadership of the of the uh, current general manager there has been what they call mismanagement. They have given an ultimatum. First of all, give me your thoughts on what is happening at ECG, having, of course, monitored the space for this long. Well, th thanks once again. The interesting thing is that uh, those claiming to have written the petition at the next meeting, uh, there is a first of all the doubt whether the next meeting was appropriately convened because. For anybody to be able to convene a next meeting for ECG staff, you definitely would have organized branch meetings for them to give you mandate to meet at the next level. So if you study the petition carefully, they are saying that there was a joint neck meeting. That suggests to you that there are a number of neck <laughs> meetings being held and that there are various necks that came together to form that. I can tell you confidently that it is very difficult to find the attendance of all those people who were at the branch levels and who came to represent at the next level to even arrive at this decision. If you also look at the decision, uh, sorry, the resolution very well, you are unclear as to who and who have signed it. But of course, even if it is one or two genuine staff of uh, ECG, obviously they also have the right to speak. So I do not stand here to just rubbish that these are ghost people who have done it. But I can I can label it as faceless. As baseless, you say. In that case, it looks like obviously that the staff of ECG are torn uh, among themselves over the general manager right now. How do you think we can resolve this matter, especially on the back of the intermittent power issues we're having? We don't want uh, you know the uh, people in the chain also fighting among themselves that might affect us oh de de definitely uh, this is more or less to create a storm out of a, a teacup you know it, it is not like that is uh, for me it's an unnecessary tension that is being created by uh, this circulation but if you look critically at some of the allegations leveled against management of ECG. Sometimes those of us with in-depth knowledge of their operations, we laugh. One of them is that ECG is cash-strapped and that it is unable to pay its workers and to meet its financial obligations. But here we are that the IPPs and Greco have never complained of non-payment. Even during COVID time where they were not made to collect uh, bills, they were still able to find for over 7,000 permanent workers, 300 uh, contract workers. They have been able to do that. They also accuse him 
of not uh, procuring enough material. But we must also accept the fact that, yes, there might be concerns there, but obviously, we have had pandemic, and the producers of some of these materials have even folded up, why are you going to get all the necessary material? Look, the MD actually faced and continues to face some of these challenges because he has stumped his feet down and he has introduced a novel uh, kind of strategy, we call it uh, mystery shoppers, into the ECG system, where people who are not customers actually go to the district to parade as customers and to fish out the corrupt people within ECG services who are extorting money from customers. And since he started doing that, he has never had a peace of mind. But I'm telling you, and, I'm, and I'm, if you have an MD and a board that is able to stamp its feet down to ensure that some uh, staff will not be able to take on due advantage of cables and then other materials available for their personal use, definitely you will not be a popular person among those sections. There is also the accusation that he has built canteen for uh, Asukwa district office and Roman Ridge district office. If it, this is a, a, a true face of a unionized workers, then I am afraid. Which kind of union or organized workers who are not interested in their own welfare at the workplace, who are not interested in a decent uh, office accommodation, which workers are not interested in getting a decent canteen, we must all remember that even as they accuse him of building an office an uh, office in Cape Coast, if he had not built that office in Cape Coast, Cape Coast staff would have been running unnecessary shifts as we speak. A lot of ECG staff, because of congestion in some district offices, are running shifts. Some of them work 14 days in a month. So if you are talking of somebody who understands corporate governance, who at some point in time some elements within their management were, were concerned that those uh, ECG, a number of ECG staff who remained, and for those EDS staff who came to join them, where there were a bit of inequality, so they should demote some section of ECG workers. It was resisted. So which kind of union will want its own members demoted? So it is, it is very difficult to, to understand where these people are coming from. So if you definitely look at some of the allegations which I have read about, it can only be said that there are some faceless elements who possibly are interested in his position as it has always been. Never mind, uh, sorry, don't forget that in 2016, a group, which I am told, a section of them are involved in this, staged a demonstration against the then MD alleging that his, he had passed his uh, compulsory retirement aid, which was not the case. They were actually fighting for space. You must also remember that in these allegations, they are saying that the MD is not allowing them to do some co uh, collection of revenue here and there. Why must he do that? Because if his board has given an instruction to ensure that the unnecessary leakages are blocked and a section of the workers cannot take undue advantage of it, of course, you must know that he does not stand to be very popular. But in all these accusations of not being uh, uh, very good in corporate governance and the rest, the man continues to win several awards, both locally and internationally. So it's a okay. bit difficult to understand. Okay, Mr. Mr. Arthur, I think that my question, I, I think that my question has not really been addressed, and and I've run out of time. But I just want to give it a last shot. That. What do you think is the way for us to resolve this on pass in the interest of the country? Well, for for resolution of this uh, pass, if we should call it so, those who are alleging this should be bold enough for them to be identified so that at least some kind of dialogue will go on. If they have genuine concerns of breaches of uh, poor corporate governance, there's a channel through which it will be addressed. Of course, the MD has a board, so they could file a petition to the board for them to sit down and to iron out these things, because okay. you are not going to say that anybody at all on this earth is an angel. So I'm calling on those people who have all those grievances to come, you know, 
they should agree even if they want to hide behind a pool which is their trade union it is acceptable that they get to the round table discuss this matters and get whatever bottlenecks that we have resolved amicably rather than to take to the media through tantrums here you know through threats here and there all right Ms. Arthur, thank you very much for your time. Uh, ben Arthur there, he's a labor consultant and he speaks for a part of the ECG staff who are not with their colleagues who want the general managers, uh, the general manager out. You're still watching The Pulse with me, Gifty and Robbie. A quick break, we'll be right back.